Well, like, except we should wait for, for Larry. Larry. Okay. I think the order is actually to, to sign that uh, amendment or agree right. to that, that amendment to the contract. Oh, and then, 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 then we have to go that way. Okay. Yeah. All right, right now I'll take a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We're back in public session again. Um, at this point, we're not going to report anything, but we will be taking action a, a little bit later um, when we get to hiring re and recruitment at 620. Um, uh, do we have any additions or changes to the agenda? Anybody want to make any changes? Okay. Minutes of December 11th and continued to December 18th. Any Changes to those. I don't have any changes. I'd make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. It's I'll been second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Board orders. Um, you all got the preliminary stuff at least without the actual check belt, check stubs um, in your Google Docs. They're going around. You have them, Jordan, right yeah, now. Yeah, we've got them. Um, but we, we, we discovered we're actually supposed to be voting <laughs> to accept them before we sign them. So would somebody like to vote to approve the board orders of, let me see, what would we say of the week of? In the past four weeks, I guess? For the past month, yeah. yeah. So moved. Okay, it's been moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Everybody's okay? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they'll come around. There's a lot to sign there, guys. So are you, are you you're accepting the board orders? Are you approving them for payment? We're approving them for payment and we're going to sign them. Approving for payment is better than? Right. Yeah. Approving for payment is better than that. Um, and each, Kari's got them organized so that the document that you sign is the first or second page in each yeah. packet there. So you don't have to saw through everything to make sure you missed it's something. It's a full month's worth. It's, it's, it's got the, the uh, social service appropriations right. from last town meeting. And we're going to be going to bi weekly payroll. So this will be the most warrants you see at one time. Maybe ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. The select board report to the town for the town report. Have you all had a chance to look at the latest draft of that, which was labeled uh, number three? Yeah, I think it was number three. Since then, I, I found a few typos, mostly commas and things. But um, I didn't change anything substantive. Um, does anybody have any comments on that? Is that Cal's warning, March 2024? No, that's the warning. This is not the warning. This is the report the that report. goes into the book that yeah. says, hey, this year we I had a great year and we did wonderful stuff. It was good. I, I know I did a thing with yeah, clarified a couple of things for Barbara, which I don't know if they're part of that. Sorry, you had a couple of things for Barbara? Just as far as like the address for the trash depot, like little things. Oh, that you wanted in the report or the? I think it might be separate in the, okay. it, does it go in the book somewhere else? I thought it was part yeah. of the town report. Yeah, I think it's part of the town report, but it's not part of the select right. board report. It's not part of the select board report, got it. Okay. No, I thought it was good. There's, you know, I. Yeah, well, you wrote part of it. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Sentence structure and thing, I think you did a very nice job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and I did a very nice job. And Jordan wrote a big chunk of it too, so um, it was a group effort. Yeah. I don't think we actually have to approve it, although I'm willing to do that if you want to, but we have to agree that this is ready for, right. for publication. Yeah, looks great. Okay. Then. Ready for publication. Ready for publication. Thanks. Yay, that's done. Um, Barbara points out that uh, in the beginning, we did not want to list our phone numbers. 
We got scared, or I think. Or emails. Or emails. Yeah, we got scared off by being told by the last select board that you were going to get absolutely inundated, but it hasn't, doesn't seem to have happened that way. Mm. Yeah, because we kept them all to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked famously. <laughs> Actually, I mean, folks were calling you, but I mean, a lot of folks have my number now. I don't know if I would want my personal number published. Um, obviously, our personal email is my personal email. It's kind of given out, like over the, I think, probably yeah. half the town has my phone number. No, yeah, what she's... pretty easily accessible. You're but, easy to find. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what really she's fun. suggesting is that we just publish our select board emails. Yes. And that it, it, we put our phone numbers in if we're willing to be contacted. And I said I was. I said I was. I, looking at the contact sheet, I mean, everybody else who does anything in town from cemetery commission to zoning to, the you listers. know, everybody, right, right. they all have, have their phone numbers in the report. I, I, have no I think problem there might be mine. a difference between, like, a home phone and cell phone, too. Like, I feel more comfortable giving out my home phone because it's in a phone book and mm, I don't feel as compelled to be on top of that, but a cell phone feels a little more personal. So you right. all can choose which one. She also wanted me to make sure we For clarify. For those who still have a landline. So I love my landline. <laughs> uh, she also wanted clarification on so the mm -hmm. town report and the website right. where you wanted both of these types of contact information. Okay. So, so, so I guess I was wondering if it may be worth discussing. Like, so that <coughs> I'd maybe feel differently if I had more more phone numbers. Uh, to, <laughs> and you know, I, the the other element, which is just just the thing, is like any time we put anything on a website, it's it will be subject to getting grabbed off of there. There's programs that are worth <clears throat> doing that, and I, I don't feel as strongly about. Uh, the email being on there at this point because now, especially with the new email system, like there are ways for filtering that stuff out, and it, there are some pre filters for spammy kind of malware type stuff. Um, uh, but I wonder if there's like a third avenue for cell phone numbers where if like if anybody needs to get in touch with a select board number, like to call the town office to get us and get a phone number. That way, there that information is accessible. We're not withholding it. But like for me, like I'm happy to have people call, and if somebody does say, "Hey, what's your cell phone number?" I'll give it to them. But it, it's nice to not have to necessarily have that right on the right on the website. Please, excuse me. Would you sign in, please? Uh, right we have done that Thank very, you. very selectively. Like if it is an emergency or something super pressing, we have on occasion given out some of your phone numbers in that case, but not usually. I usually hesitate unless someone has given me specific advice. To that. Well, I think that we taking it a step further by actually making a making a statement on the website that says if you would like to get in touch by phone with one of the select board members, please call the office and they will be provided their preferred phone number for contact. So you want that on the website and or the town report? I'm, I'm putting it up for discussion, yeah. I guess, yeah. I'd like to hear um, how, I kind of know how both of you feel now. How do you guys feel? I, don't, I agree with Jordan with that possibility of getting okay. um, <coughs> my phone number out there to people like Jimmy calling me. Um, so you'd rather not have your number public? I mean, I, pragmatically, everyone, anyone who wanted it could get it. You know what I mean? Because it people were contacting me yeah. through the summer that they just all share with each other. So I think everyone has my number. But on the website, man, but if like, you were to give it out, I'm okay with that. How about town report? We could also put the same message in the town report. I, I don't mind it being in the town report. I mean, that's generally start, circulated in hard copy, right? And mm -hmm. it's not published on. Is it published in the When you put it website? online, oh, so we put it on our website, and then there's a state website that has all the town reports for all the towns. But it's, it, like it's in the PDF form. Right. It's not right. like. It's definitely a degree of removal. I, I don't have. A strong objection to it, to the phone numbers being posted in in the town reports and then posted wherever those go. But mm -hmm. now, especially you know, Kari, Tegan, and Barbara in the office, that you know they're apprised of enough of the issues that are coming up that it's just like an extra little degree of filtering, um, and and just to make sure somebody gets directed to somebody who, you know, they might be calling to look for somebody, but 
somebody else is actually handling that particular business item. And how, do you feel the same way, Anne? Me? Yeah. As far as um, having it published in the town report, but not uh, on the website. Yeah, I think I, I'd be okay with that. Okay. And I think, like filtering, like Jordan's saying, it's nice because there are certain areas that we tend to move in, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. someone calling me about damn questions. I'd be like, you know what I mean? I think they would know to call you, but. Okay, Donnie, you don't have a landline. How do you feel? I don't care. You don't care? No. So you're willing to be published both places? Yeah. Let them all call you. I mean, I, I like Jordan's yes. idea, but it, it doesn't matter to me. You'll talk to anybody anytime. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say anytime. <laughs> but, uh, Where the cell phones on? <laughs> So, um, does it make sense to do it with three of us having our numbers published and two not uh, in the town report? I'm, I mean, in the uh, on the website, I'm fine with that. Does anybody see a downside to that? Okay. So then, if you all want to break down the number you want published and where you feel comfortable being published, or email Barbara or me or call somehow contact us and let us know which numbers are being posted where. Well, why don't we get them right now? Because yeah, people aren't going to remember. Um, oh, we can harass you. Barbara and I are good at that. <laughs> well, you can do that. All right. All right. Uh, so, Jamie. I'm fine. Select board email, cell phone number. You and Barbara have it probably. Yeah. Both places. That's right. You only have the one. I only have the yeah. one phone. So, and they can be in both places, you yep. said. Okay. We're going to put this stuff in the <laughs> house. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd rather be in, in the report, but maybe not on the website. Just with the email address on the website. And did you just have the one phone number? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so... It's probably the only one out of state as well, so... It's no, cool. mine's out of state. Oh, thank oh, yeah. Arizona. Yeah. You already have it's mine. It's, it's my little one. Five, five, six, five, five, six, five, five, I have, I have all it in this spreadsheet. You've got landlines, work phones, phone phones okay. for everybody. I just need to know. I would like phone. to do with my landline. Okay. And you said both places you felt comfortable? That, I'm fine with both. I aspire to landline and four digit license plate, I guess. <laughs> and the four digit license plate. I mean, it's a lottery. So <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's hear what Donnie wants. Donnie, you said both places are fine. Your cell phone? Yeah. It's the only phone I have. Okay. And, and your cell phone in the town report? Town report. Okay. Is it still on the website? It was on the website for a while. It might not be on the website now. I will double check. Oh. Great. We both had our phone. We both, yeah. Because I think that's why I think that's probably changed. Well, it should be, but I'll, I'll, Carrie and I can double check the roads page to make sure that it's up to date. Okay, then. Shall we move on? Public comment. Anybody wish to make a public statement on an issue that's not on the agenda? I have some stuff Barbara gave me. Gave you all because I found this public comment. Sure. <laughs> May as well do it here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is the town audit. There are a few copies. Anyone who is interested in a copy may take one. There is also one at the um, office that for public use or for us to use, but if anyone wants a physical copy of the audit from last year. There's a couple. Is this different from the draft that we got and approved? No. You, it's this the same one. Final. This one says final. This is final, but it's the same one we approved. I don't know. I haven't. Oh, and it's nicely read. Accepted. <laughs> okay. Um, Take good money for that by name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, an excavator company gave us calendars. If anyone like a calendar, otherwise I get recycled. These are free for anyone who would like one. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys need any more down at their garage, or do they already have them? Are you serious? Yeah. Jordan wants two. I do need two. Go for it. Yeah. That's for you. That's for you. I think that's all the stuff she needs. What's this? This is. Oh goodness! This is all on the website. I'll take out a copy of that. Yeah. Send us one an audit copy. And again, there's the PDF, and then there's the copy at the office. I don't get any time. That's awesome. Okay, thanks, Tegan. Um, now, Larry isn't here. 
So maybe what we could do, we'll go to hiring and recruitment and we'll talk about town treasurer, assistant treasurer. Right, so remember the model that we have um, included in next year's budget, which would take effect in March, would be appoint me as the treasurer and hire a part-time assistant, which we call the assistant treasurer. Um, and uh, since we're only a couple months out, we've already gone ahead and posted that position with a draft job description. Um, but now I'm asking for approval of that draft. Um, and you should know it was reviewed by our staff, including Sandra and Wendy Wilton, um, who's performed that role, and then Jill Moore from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Um, so that's our, sort of our best thinking at this point. So you posted it where? Um, in the normal free places, which includes the website from Porch Forum, Vermont League of Cities and Towns website. Um, we posted it around town, so it's up at the store and the, it's closed up. The MuniNet? Is that? We put it on MuniNet, yeah, on the list for I think that's it. And we've got and, no new And we've got no applications. And I know Barbara's working on getting it up to the colleges. I don't know how far. She oh, that's right. She was, she was able to post it to um, a college. Oh, they're sending it to. Um, Local CPAs, you know, they may have interns or something yes. who would be yes. really Let's excited about yeah, it. She was hoping the colleges that she found a thing where you can post jobs to all the local colleges, mm -hmm. and so she was excited about that. I can reach out to someone who had actually applied, I think, for the treasurer position. So, um, would anybody like to comment on the draft itself? No, I, I really like that you added so many things that we add these days into our job applications, like you will be doing the following things and uh -huh. lifting the things and looking at things and hearing Your fingers things. have to be nimble. <laughs> <laughs> it follows the uh, template that the uh, league recommends. Oh. Yeah, no, and that's very solid. I imagine federal job descriptions look a lot like that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Anybody want to offer any changes? I guess the one question that popped into my head is uh, when it says part time, twenty hours a week, occasionally up to twenty five. Yeah. Is that um, going to be more fluctuating based on time of year and tax? That, that's exactly. So what I don't know. Like, like, is it going to be fifteen sometimes and forty sometimes? Or it's really hard to say. Yeah. I think we'll work with the person, but we know right. that tax season is the, is the crunch. Right. We wanted to have some flex in there right? Um, because we, we've got to take those payments and process them. And yeah. I mean, I think that's that. fine for... Yeah. And then keep in mind, there's also the delinquent tax collector, which by statute is a separate, separate. function. It must be kept separate. Traditionally, I think it's been done by the treasurer. Sandra is doing it this year. Uh, and we have budgeted for it for next year. It, it's possible that this person could also do that, but it could be somebody else. And Sandra actually said that she'd be willing to hang on to that portion of oh, you know, her work. Oh, that'd be nice to have Sandra. So that you know that could provide a little stability as we transition. Yeah. That's yeah. the part of the job that really flexes, right? Because it's actually not much to do parts of the year. Would somebody like to move approval of this draft? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the draft of the job description uh, presented by Kari for assistant treasurer. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Kari. Yep, thank you. Larry's still not here. Um, shall we skip over it? Is, he said he was coming for sure. Yeah, yeah we shouldn't do it without him, so. Hopefully. We shouldn't even hire John without him. Well, uh, well, I think we have to ask if he needs any input, I guess. Procedurally, right? Um, I mean, we both have to sign an addendum to our contract. So we before we can really hire the, that, the that. position doesn't oh, exist. That's right. That's what you said. It's okay. Unfortunate. We, maybe you could um, approve it provisionally because I, well, I suggested we could do the signing remotely. Is there any reason? Why don't we just jump over to the boom over yeah, for a minute? See if he comes. Maybe he'll yeah. show up. So that's up next. We're going to look at. Um, a, a, a resolution for the boom mower. Yes. We're going to talk about that. So um, you approved the purchase and financing of this piece of equipment last time we met, or in December anyway, and part of the um, financing package is a resolution um, 
It's, which basically states that we, the town has a need for this piece of equipment, and actually you're going to need to do this again for the grader to warn the bond vote on the grader. So I guess this is standard standard fare that, that the board has to say there is a definite need for this piece of equipment before you borrow money. Um, and that's it. The rest of the um, financing application is in the packet. It's quite extensive. It is quite extensive, and we have to give you approval to sign it on our behalf. Do we need to do that tonight as well? Or is that part of the, um, uh, um, what it is we're going to do here, this um, statement that we're going to? It's a good question. I think that would be that would be good form to get that in there, just so there's no question at all. And um, where's the language that we're? It's in the memo. The, oh, yeah, the, it's in the memo. The, the, I knew yeah, the memo has the resolution. Yep, so just asking you to adopt this resolution. Um, and maybe, and maybe after that, authorize Cardo. Well, yeah, the language it. says um, down in the second paragraph, and hereby designates and authorizes there the you. following there person, yeah. so we need to put your name in there. Yeah, okay. So, with the, so I would say hereby designates and authorizes Kari Bradley to execute and deliver. Okay, any questions or discussions on that resolution? Would somebody like to move it? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Rose, you set. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, and now the truck payment. You have a right. new payment plan for I'm us. I'm not sure how much this board knows about this truck. There's a, there's a description here. It came from Sandra, actually. She wasn't even fully aware of all of this because it kind of happened during the tail end of the last select board year in, in, in January and February. After the budget was finalized, the select board approved purchase of a new truck. And that truck didn't arrive until July, so in that transition, I think it just got lost. It was it did not appear in the budget. Um, Sandra was completely unaware that we were going to be on the hook for payment. Um, um, and then you know, and the flood and all that. So um, the leasing company, K State, KS State Bank, is willing um, to defer the. Um, Principal payments until July of 25, and that will help with cash flow since we didn't budget for it for this year. Um, so that does add some interest, and the new payment plan is on this document that's in, in the packet. Um, and we're just asking approval of that. Titled Exhibit B2 Payment Schedule. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like it was signed. Signed by Denise? I guess that needs to be changed. It's just... <laughs> well, they, they, they put her, typed her name in there. Okay. I just crossed it out on my copy and put your name. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so what we need is a motion to authorize me to sign this on behalf of the select board. Okay. Um, and this increases our payment from something like 40-something Increases it by about a thousand dollars. Eight hundred dollars, I think it was. A little, a little, yeah. Almost nine hundred. A year. And a year. For, for a couple for of years. years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Everybody yeah. okay with this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'll take a motion to authorize me to sign this payment schedule on behalf of the board. So moved. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Curry, you have a copy that I can sign? I do. My I copy do. has Denise in here still, so. Okay. All right, thanks. And um, still no Larry. Okay. Why don't we move to the Municipal Climate Relief Fund? You want to explain yeah, that? Yeah, just one? action packed tonight. So, uh, remember, we are anticipating uh, running out of cash because of all the FEMA expenses that haven't been reimbursed and won't be reimbursed for quite some time. Just to update on that, Toby has now submitted at least two of the worksheets. He did the Callus uh, Dam was the first one because it fit into some specific category. And then he did 
the largest one, which is Moscow Woods, was over four hundred thousand dollars. So that's those two and maybe one or two others have been submitted for the first layer of review. Um, uh, so we're working with a basically an account manager who's been assigned to us in a few other towns, and she goes through everything in detail, asks for questions, asks for more information, and then she sends those applications to the next layers and. And actually, it spreads out. There's historic, there's uh, environmental review, there's, there's multiple um, layers. And so it, my point is, it's going to be some time until we actually see any payments. So I, we, I just we, want to give a shout out to Scott and Charlotte, too. I mean, they've been doing, you see them at the town office for hours, yeah. doing the tedious work of organizing all this and putting it into the computer. It is very The tedious. pictures and the documents, and it's incredible the work they've been doing on our behalf. So, anticipating this, the town uh, established a line of credit with our primary bank, Community National, uh, last summer. Um, and. You know, it's 1.7 million, up to 1.7 million dollars, at uh, just about four percent. And the timing of that is actually, we, we didn't know when we were going to need to borrow, so we set it up to go through the year ending August 30th, which doesn't that wouldn't really work for us, even if that were the case, because we, we we won't have tax payments to re, to repay that until at least September. Um, however, the state has set up this alternative. Um, which they're calling the Municipal Climate Recovery Fund. It's a partnership between the Bond Bank and the Treasury Department, where they're just basically going to loan municipalities um, money uh, at a very low rate, 1.3 percent, interest only the first two years, no penalty for early repayment. So it's it, it's a it's a loan, but it's it's essentially a line of credit, and. Um, the application, the first round of applications is due Wednesday. So needing approval to, or authorization to make the application. Sandra and I looking at the budget, um, the financial report halfway through this year um, that we're gonna talk about later, and then anticipating what are the expenses remaining in this fiscal year, plus the first part of fiscal 25. We think $500,000 should be plenty to get us through. Um, and if we borrow a little more than we needed, that's no problem. We'll, we'll just pay it back um, quickly. So, um, so that's the ask: is the authorization to um, apply uh, this Wednesday um, for five hundred thousand dollars from the Municipal Climate Recovery Fund. It's, it's really a welcome thing. I mean, very that's fortunate. Much better. And we want to get in this, this first round of applications because there's only fifteen million dollars in there. We're asking for a third of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so is it um, is there a drawdown period, or is it actually a loan? So it's a loan that you can repay at any point. Yes. Um, have we we haven't drawn anything against the one point seven that we approved. No, we have not at all. Right. Yeah. So. And, they, and they will. They do plan to distribute um, the funds in. Is either late February or early March. Mm -hmm. So that timing works really well for us. Other questions? Everybody understand? Yeah. So what we need is a motion to authorize Kari and Sandra to proceed with the application. Is that right? Yeah. Rose, is that enough for you to put something together? Would somebody like to move that? So moved. Okay, Jordan's moved. Is there a second? second. And seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. And Thanks for staying on top of that, Kari. Uh, yeah, there was not yeah. a lot of advance notice on that um, at all. <laughs> no. Good fun. Um, well, let's move on to ARPA funds then. So we we actually have a really good summary, finally, yeah. <laughs> of what's going on with the ARPA funds. And you all got that and studied it carefully, I'm sure. Um, it, Kari, walk us through what's going on with the clawback and why we have to act and so on. Yeah, so um, the American Rescue Plan Act funds uh, made available to us. The previous select board had allocated funds to various places. Much of that has been spent at this point. Um, some of it's been partially spent. So Sandra finally did the accounting to see where we stand 
Um, and almost everything has been has been um, distributed, spent, or, or um, sent out. We've got the $60,000 that was out allocated for the East Calus Fire District um, that, that we haven't expended yet. Um, and then we've got uh, $37,180 that has not been allocated to anything, which is, which is good news. And then we have another $1,901 that was appropriated for the Emergency Management Equipment Fund, but hasn't been spent. So, um, so that's what's remaining. The League uh, of Cities and Towns is recommending to that, that um, their goal is that none of this money goes back to the feds. That it all gets stays here in Vermont and is spent by the towns. And they have some concerns that if the money is not expended this year, expended meaning spent or sent distributed to a beneficiary that the feds may want to claw back. I'm not exactly sure why they're concerned about that, but they're concerned enough that they're taking an official position that by March 1st, you should, we should do our best to expend remaining funds. Um, so that, you they, know. they don't actually have to be spent, but they have to be off, out of our budget and into somebody else's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and um, yeah, so that, that's, that's where we are, and we don't necessarily have to make those decisions tonight. Although, if you want to make a decision or, a de or decisions that impact next year's budget, then you need to do that tonight because we have to finalize the budget tonight. So, for example, one thing you could do is allocate some portion of that 39000 to the Highway Capital Equipment Fund and thereby lower the, um, that budget line item that's in next year's budget. And remember, $20,000 is about one percentage point of the budget. I thought you were talking about uh, using it to pay down the first payment on the boom mower. Mm -hmm. But that'd be part of the capital. You've already allocated, um, what was it, 50000 Yeah. For the boom mower. Yeah. You, I mean, if you put it in the equipment fund, it can be used for the next boom mower payment. It could be used for oh, we the don't truck have payment. To, it could be used uh, for the grader. The ARPA rules don't require that it be very specific as no, to what it's being no. used for? You can, no. you can actually use ARPA for almost anything. You Free money. Yeah. Um, I'll just mention that um, Nick needs a little bit more than the 1900 in there because uh, there was a memo. He's, um, Kari, do you remember what it is? It's something about hooking up uh, the, the generator and. It, I think it's the. Right, they the, thought they could run the wire yeah. from the antenna to the radio the themselves. Antenna, that's it. Yeah. Um, but because of the nature of the building and it's got to go through a couple of walls, they want to hire an electrician yeah. to do it. Yep. And there was one other thing too, and the total came to $1,955, uh, maybe. He, he wasn't sure about one of them, but he may need a little bit more than that. So we might want to save out a little bit to help them. Um, and we're working with, we'll be working with them to see if we can figure out how to give them the money if they can't spend it by March. Right. Okay. Yeah, $1,955, it was his last estimate. Again, you don't have to make that decision tonight if you hang on to at least that amount of money and need a little more. The, the decision I would encourage you to think about is if you want any of this money to go towards, to draw, you know, bring down next year's budget, um, right. tonight's the night to think about that. I, I think it would be good to use the bulk of it in that way, and I was thinking exactly highway equipment uh, to bring some of that down. We might also look, and I didn't get a chance to look and bring specific ideas, but there were a number of relatively small items that we cut from next year's budget throughout the process um, that we might go back and look at some of those cuts we made and say, well, you know, they wanted 5,000, we gave them three, let's give them another thousand of this ARPA money. Um, so we might do the bulk of it to the highway and then save 10 or 12,000 to, to fill some of those needs that we felt the need to cut from next year's budget. 
Yeah, I guess one that stands out to me is the is the dock. Uh, yeah, replacement, yeah. replacement uh, which was kind of a painful one to have to cut out. Not yeah. how critical that is to the swimming program. But if it's a matter of allocate, I guess that was twenty five hundred. Uh, more I think it was so five thousand. 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 So the, what have you talked about this one-time use is the dock, the town office air conditioner, the interactive map program, and we never put any money to it, but something for the acoustics in this room. Right. So that's what I came up with, if you can remember. So maybe we do something like, if, if what we have available is the 37, we could say, okay, let's take 20 of it, which is 1%. Mm -hmm and use that to reduce next year's budget and save the remaining, right. whatever that is, 17. Just Let's gather all the thoughts well, and then we'll talk I, about I it. I would prefer to put it all towards offsetting our costs. Just respectfully Didn't from the east side of town, CB Fiber, 200,000 has totally helped hook up over here, the east side isn't going to see any kind of benefit from that. I don't know for how long we put a lot of money towards the Curtis Pond Association through the ARPA money. Um, I know it's really important, I know they can do their swimming program this year, but there is, I know there's folks that have the resources that can help offset like the dock and just me personally thinking about trying to pay my property taxes this coming year. It was incredibly challenging this year to muddle through um, anything we can do to to reduce it and, and spend it on concrete things like our roads um, is important. So Kari, if we put the, let's just suppose we put the entire money in, that reduces the increase from what to what on a percentage basis? Yeah, I mean, somewhere in the neighborhood of 7%. Seven, uh, seven and it's it, currently we have it at eight something. Yeah, eight, okay. eight point seven, I think it was. Eight point seven three. Thirty thousand of it would bring it down to seven point two, two one. one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I you know I, I calculated a five thousand on top of that because that's what was in the memo about the five the, the ambulance he's my clear ambulance, which brought it down to six point nine something. However, we're we may entertain increasing the licensing, software licensing by $900 to bring it back up. So. <laughs> okay. um, I'm going to throw out a third option, which I was thinking more of the future. Um, we've been talking about the need to look at the town garage, which is in abysmal shape. We're outgrowing our town office. Um, maybe instead we want to consider putting the money toward making a plan towards hiring yeah. somebody to help <laughs> us to plan. One of my questions is whether or not we can uh, create uh, a, a dedicated account, much like we've done with other alloc allocations, and and create a new create a new account where we throw it into that for. Mm. Um, yeah. So for we future have future planning. We but, have three options on the table. <laughs> All right, so we've got one person who feels, at least one, who feels very strongly the entire amount should go to reduce taxes. We have well, I think when we have programs, many towns put their entire ARPA funds into their road program. Okay. The municipal, you know. Sorry, Donnie, go ahead. I, I would go along with that as well. With, with what Ann what yeah, has think, suggested? Yeah. Okay. I just, I even think even the one percent that or so that Jamie suggested for um, funding other items? Yeah. I think with the flood this year, there are people that are having a hard time even living yeah. in their home right now. And I think the last thing that we need to do is add more taxes to that. But well, we are adding more. We, <laughs> we, yeah. we are, but we're, we're trying to at least yeah. limit that. And I think that's really important right now because there's more people living 
on the side of the road and, and tents and things like that. I think right now, I think it's just important to kind of keep that cost down. Can I just add, if you don't know, the um, common level appraisal numbers came out in the past 10 days, and it's a disaster. And so, you know, what I've seen, just preliminary numbers of the school budget, is that CALS is going to have something like $300 of additional property tax per $100,000 value at your home. Which is a lot. It's going to hurt. Yeah. All right. Further discussion? No, I mean, I, I think we, we've done some really good, painful work, you know, weighing, weighing things um, when it came to some of the extracurriculars this year. And I think that was a pretty, pretty healthy exercise. Um, so I think to both Anne and Donnie's point, you know, keeping, keeping them cut for a year, particularly in a challenging year, was a good exercise to go through. Um, and then we have, we have another opportunity to do it all over again next year. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I do think that any kind of sum of money like that needs to either go towards offsetting, you know, taxes or put towards one-time planning expenses. You know, I think it's really hard for a town of our size to to invest in planning resources and, and set aside the, the money for that. And I, I think we need it more, more than ever. Um, and... Yeah, it's going to be a painful tax year. So, and we've got some pretty big, pretty big ticket items. Uh, it'd, it'd be nice to see it allocated to something specific, as opposed to just going into a, uh, into a the highway, you know, capital equipment fund. But you know, if we can apply it to something very specific, um, that that would be great. Um, or to offset some of the other expenses that are going to be rolling in. I would be open to supporting creating. The kind of account you're talking about in a year. Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I think even just this year, being able to see how that town highway budget shakes out with the meticulous um, detailing of how it's going, you know, spending some time exploring what financial opportunities. I know we're looking at grants and things, but even to help work on the garage, which is like a total. <laughs> you know, but make it so it doesn't collapse it on itself or whatever. Um, and kind of thinking about it and having those discussions and then moving on it maybe next year. Um, because we are gonna we are gonna upgrade the town office, the garage is yeah, I a mess, but just it's so already carrying a lot. If we're gonna do something to reduce um, taxes we have to decide tonight. Um, so would somebody like to make a motion? Can I ask one more question? Of course. There's been a lot of conversation about the highway uh, capital equipment funding and the flexibility of said funds. Have we, is there an account that we've determined um, has sufficient flexibility that if we fund it now and decide we want to reallocate those funds? In the future, it provides enough flexibility. You know, we, I'm guessing that you know, it's not going to look good if we just create an account that says, you know, leftover ARPA <laughs> slush fund. Um, yeah. But if we have an account that is sufficiently flexible that can help offset costs in the short term, but then create a surplus in the future that we can then draw from to fund future. Well, so is the question if there's a fund balance in the Equipment fund at year end can that be reallocated to something else? Yeah. You know, at the risk of you know I don't being think so. wrong. Uh, well, but we went you, you don't think so? no, no, I think when we, we create a reserve fund, we say the money. It's usually done by Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. We usually put money into the equipment fund by Australian ballot, and the town says it is to be used for this. You can't use it for anything else. And it's pretty strict. That's yeah. the definition okay. of a reserve fund. But then how did we, what did we fall under when we put those signs that we originally paid for under ARPA? Well, we that wasn't, under that the wasn't. Was that under general budget? That was just general budget on okay. rating expenses. So yeah. that, and like the green up tires and that, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that was the opposite direction. <laughs> it, does, it does strike me that the need for highway equipment is so ever present that it's essentially yeah. putting it in a general fund. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a little less that you have to put some right. work. You can, yeah. No, 
All right. Would 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 somebody like to make a motion that we can begin? We can even if it's not one we're ready to vote on yet, just so we have something to respond to. Would you like to frame a motion? What are we voting? I mean, are we in some sort of consensus, or are we still? I don't know in yet. State I, of I, not I'm, I'm going to find. Can you speak to, to whether or not if you put it? Can in I that answer Anne's question yeah, first? Yeah. All I wanted you to do was put it in words, and then if we can get a motion on the table, then we can start discussing and wordsmithing it. So I wanted you to give me something that we could start reacting to. But let's pause and let Jordan ask okay. his question. If we. If we put it into the Highway uh, Capital Equipment Fund, is there a particular expenditure that we could apply it to that would have a direct impact on next year's budget? Or are there other items on the budget that we would need to apply it to specifically? Well, I think it will uh, be, if it goes in there, most likely will be used for the truck payment, the boom mower, or, or the yeah. grader. Well, I think that's it because the chipper is coming off this year. It might be a piece of equipment that's in the pipeline, but but we, it, you know, this year we're basically going for three big pieces of equipment that um, are going to be with us for a number of years. So I, I don't think you need to specify any one thing. It, it's sure to be spent. That drives and, the point. Oh yes, it's going to Well, wait a minute. Wouldn't the idea be? I mean, in our budget, we've uh, we've allocated fifty thousand for highway capital equipment. If we put thirty thousand in. Doesn't that reduce it by twenty thousand down to twenty thousand? Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's how. That's it what I was asking. Yeah. 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 We would okay. we would ask the town for less. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, okay. Yeah. That's what you meant. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I'd like to just get a motion on the table so we can re react to it. Would somebody like to frame one? I would like to make a motion to apply the balance, allocate the balance of the ARPA funds toward the currently budgeted $50,000 of uh, capital equipment in the FY25 budget. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, you don't need to put it in the budget. You, you're just putting it in the reserve fund. fund and then drawing down, you know, reducing mm -hmm. the budget accordingly right. by the second half. Yep. Okay. So all thirty nine thousand, whatever it is. Uh, well, it's called what Nick needs. Plus, minus what? What? Uh, well, we don't actually know. Nick was guessing, but we'll. So the current amount is. Where's my ARPA list? So just, just hold back a, a little bit of money, and uh, you can always allocate it again. Right. Yeah. right. I think the total is like thirty seven thousand one hundred and eighty dollars and sixteen cents. Minus, shall we hold out a hundred or so for Nick? I think it was more than that because. I mean, so I was a day of electrical work, so it's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like. No, no, he's months. already got nineteen hundred. Right. He really only needs another fifty or so. I, I was just giving him a little extra. Does that uh, include the material and stuff? Is oh yeah, yeah. Purchase? Yeah, he's all set. No, it's just a couple of things that came up. He's already got spent most of the money he got. Okay, we originally gave him forty-five thousand. Of that, is that what I'm? No, I'm looking at the wrong one. It's in here anyway. What we originally gave him, how much he spent, and then how much is left. It's all in here. Here it is. Sixteen thousand ninety-two dollars. Um, see below for accounting. So that's all below here. Curry, are you able to do this more quickly? Here it is. Okay, we gave him of the thirty-two thousand two hundred and forty-seven dollars. He spent twenty thousand. No, and eleven thousand and. He so what what, what, is he done? what what I've seen from his email no, from is. Um, December first is that he needs well he's estimated five hundred dollars for the right. cell signal booster and communication radio and then a thousand four hundred and fifty five dollars for radio communication that's what you're talking about right that's what he's well I'm, I'm pointing out we actually gave him he's actually spent twenty one thousand four hundred and sixty four dollars <coughs> total ARPA funds used appropriate so in, plus another nineteen thousand of the amount we allocated and what's left is one thousand nine hundred and seventy five cents nine hundred dollars and seventy five cents that he has not yet spent so he's still got that 
He's asking um, for another 50 or so. $55. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, that's an estimate. Right. But so it's I feel like every, almost every meeting, somebody comes with some little need that's come up that's pretty necessary. I would offer an amendment to Jordan's motion that we transfer $35,000 of the remaining ARPA funds to the highway department and we leave a balance of 2,180 or whatever as I like that. And then if, if we need to, we, we'll do something with it. We right can now. put it there later. Yeah. But it just gives us a little bit of a buffer. I like that. Yeah. What do you Amendment think, Ann? accepted. I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's, I just want to, I just, I, I, I don't no, I sound I, like I'm a, like a big meanie, but I, you know. I, I mean, I agree little things with you. do come up, and like the emergency things that exactly. they're doing are going to benefit the whole town and right. the greater community with improving our communications, um, which are horrible because of the right. cell towers. towers. Um, so there was a friendly amendment in your absence. So we put thirty-five thousand into the highway fund, and then leave that twenty-one hundred. Just to Rainy deal with day, things, just in case. Margarita machine. <laughs> Probably not. Spring Don't you think I would go for that? <laughs> I know. Well, you gotta get the ice and you know, there's the salt. Don't keep asking why there's not a big machine in the town office, and I don't know if it is. A what machine? Creamy. Creamy machine. It's supposed to be down at this store, honestly. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion on the table to allocate. 35000 into the Highway Equipment Fund and to reduce the appropriation by that amount and to just to hold on to the remaining amount for now. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. And we still have no Larry Mulquin. Do you think he thought he was supposed to come at 7? I don't know, I texted him and I know that he could he might be on the road. Well he might have me some reception here in Tell us. So. <laughs> um well then He was here today. He was in the He was supposed to be. He was coming to the garage at 3 30. How about if we I don't want to get into the budget then, because that's gonna take a little time. We can talk quickly about the East Montpelier Fire Department, and if he isn't here by then, I think we'd better go back and just do it without him. Yeah, and so preliminary approval. Okay. So East Montpelier Fire Department. Um, Seth Bongarts, uh, Seth, I keep calling him that. Seth, he's a legislator. Um, Seth Gardner, who is the chair of the East Montpelier Select Board, called me the other day with a suggestion that we take that we require that the fire department allocate 15,000 more than they've already allocated toward operating expenses. And I, I sent you all a memo about that, um, but Rose, um, I especially would like to hear what you have to say about it. He said that in, when we originally had this agreement, they were supposed to give all their ambulance revenues toward operating expenses. But then they stopped doing that and started putting it into their highway equipment funds. Um, he thinks that that fund is pretty flush now, and he did talk them into using 1,500 of it for operating expenses this year, which means that we that reduces our share by 500 and East Montpelier's share by 1,000, because we're one third, two thirds. Mm -hmm. He wants to have a meeting next Monday at which the two boards agree to order them, he said, <laughs> to put 30,000 in instead of 15, which would give us, reduce our budget by another 5,000. So is that clear what Seth is proposing? Okay. Since then, I've taken a good look at the interlocal agreement, and I left that file at home too. Um, but the uh, number seven on the interlocal agreement clearly to me states that the East Montpelier Fire Department has 
complete control over all their ambulance revenues. So I'm not, is that your understanding, Rose? So I'm not, I, but I, I didn't know enough to bring that up to Seth when he talked to me. So I don't know how the discussion would go Monday night, but he would like us to have a joint meeting Monday night over there in East Montpelier and talk about the possibility of doing this. Personally, and, and I, as we spoke, would not be saying that we agree or necessarily. No, 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 just that's right. That this he'll, he'll make his case. For sure the fire department's going to be there because they know about this now. <laughs> They're going to have something to say about it. Um, I think it would be a good idea for us just to meet with them anyway. It would be a good idea for us to meet with them and have a conversation with them. So my first question is, can we all go to this meeting at 6.30 next Monday? Or can at least most of us? I can make it. Okay. Yeah, I don't blame you, Donnie. I may be in Charleston. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good excuse. Yes, it is. Is that <laughs> North Carolina? Or? South Carolina. Ah, good, good for you. <laughs> I also would like to talk about another issue with them when we get there, and that's um, the provision of the interlocal agreement. Um, as I read the interlocal agreement very carefully, I realized what happened was the provision used to say that if you want to get out of this three-way agreement at any time, you can do it Every, there's an opportunity to do it once every five years, provided you give at least one year's notice, so everybody has a chance to think about it. For some reason, and Rose, maybe you know about this, they blew it up and they changed it with this thing that I can't even understand. And when I talk about it with Seth, his interpretation is completely different from mine. And they seem to be trying to use it as the way to amend the document which I don't think is what was ever intended. So I'm going to propose that we go back to the original language, and if we need um, a process for amendment, let's just put in another paragraph that says, if we want to amend the document, here's the process. Mm -hmm. And I've written up some proposed language. So I would also like to ask Seth to put that on the agenda for the two boards to discuss Monday night. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, I think that'd be great if you could piggyback that. And I'll do all this up and get documents to everybody so they'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Good. I'm sure that um, it was Sharon Lynn Fan who came up with that language. Um, I know it for a fact because I was there. Um, what were they trying to accomplish? I think so. And, so you know, and it's the same thing about, you know, <coughs> fire departments have always been in the select board budget. And she, you know, was chair of the select board. She wanted to get it out and have it a separate standalone item. Um, but I feel that it's a town's responsibility to provide for emergency services, fire and ambulance. That's kind of a municipality's responsibility. And so by taking it out of the select board budget, making it a standalone thing, sure, maybe there's more transparency. But if everybody at town meeting wants to say, you know, vote it down, well, you know, you know I, I guess you just won't have an ambulance come to your house next time you need one. Or, but you I know, don't see how I don't right. see how that language change accomplishes that. Right, right, right. So, yeah. so it must have been part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So All right. um, the other thing about the operating um, about the money. So when the ambulance revenue comes in. Um, and it's approved, okay, so say the month, and then the board meets on the last Wednesday of the month. They look at all the ambulance revenue, and it used to be that um, a certain amount was taken off the top of the total amount of revenue, and that was for paramedic intercepts, and it used to be either 250 or $500 if you need a paramedic from Barry City to come, so they would subtract that. And then the cost of billing, the um, certified billing clerk was someone that we use in Barry City. They're the ones who submit all the claims to all the insurance companies. So that came off. And then a certain amount was put into the contingency fund. And the contingency fund, in, um, per the interlocal agreement, is capped at 40000 Right. So right. they have that. And then the rest goes to highway equipment. Or yeah, the highway, highway equipment. equipment. Yeah, the equipment capital fund, equipment. capital yeah. equipment fund. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do on, with a monthly revenue. Yeah, um, yeah, 
I, I understand. Clearly worth having yeah. a meeting and talking about okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I'm glad Great. we can all do yeah. that. Um, can you say the time one more time? 6.30. 6.30, okay. It shouldn't be very long. There'll just be those two items. And it's at the... I'm pretty Fire sure. Station, uh, or? No, no, he's no, not really your town office. Town, yeah. Okay. Because okay. it's there's just select board meetings. It's right just now. the two boards. It's yeah. not. Um, not the, officially the. It's fire not officially department. the fire yeah. department, although. We're going to be. Have, do we have to warn it as? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we're going to have to warn that. So don't let me forget. Okay. <laughs> or, is it a do. normal meeting for them, or is it a regular no. meeting for them? No. It's a special meeting. It's a special. But they're meeting for tonight both. also okay. to talk about this. Do we want Orca there? Oh, golly, I don't know. I thought they meet on the first and third Mondays. Well, Seth told me they were meeting tonight and they oh. would discuss this, and that this would be a special meeting for them. So, oh, I don't know. Do we, we do we want Orca there? <laughs> I'll, I'll let the staff figure that yeah. out. Nick, you're here for the ARPA discussion, and I'm sorry this was bad, but we already had it. Oh, okay. Uh, but I will tell you what happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've done. We've crunched the numbers, and you've already, you've got 1,900 left. Remaining. Remaining. Oh. And you want what you gave us was an estimate of nineteen hundred and fifty-five dollars. So we're going to hold back a little. We're going to expend most of the ARPA funds on something else, but we're going going to hold back a little so that we can pay for the extra. So you're all set. Okay. But you should go ahead and try to either you've got to expend them by the end of March. Yeah, we'll definitely. You can do that. Way before that. If, yeah, and if you can't, we at least have to get them out of our but our fund and into one of yours. Yes. Yeah, we expect to have everything done, certainly in February. Great. And you'll just submit the bills then, and we'll pay them out of the ARPA funds. All right. Well, thank you for making that happen. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you okay. for all the hard work. All right, let's go back to um, hiring and recruitment. I think I give up. They're not coming. So what I would say is you can you can agree as proposed. I mean, this was their draft. And you'll probably sign it, and then you can do the hiring contingent on them reaching agreement. On reaching them. agreement. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Would somebody like to make a motion? You want to s authorize me to sign on behalf of the select board to sign the addendum to the union agreement. I would make a motion to authorize you to sign the addendum to the union agreement. Well said, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> that will second that motion. And we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. One on eight. Twenty twenty three. Four. Cool. Oh. <laughs> yes. Would you pass that over? Well, I used to come out on the first five and six track. Okay. Thank you. So we'll just send that off. Um, then we need a. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Sorry. You're doing great, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> if any of us can just walk into a room and have our stuff done. And get a thousand dollars for three minutes. So now we need a motion to uh, hire John Stafford as road foreman. Contingent on, Contingent on Contingent Larry Mokwin signing yeah. the agreement. Come on, make it. Me? I thought you were starting. Sure, why don't you make a motion? Uh, 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 it's uh, his hand, it's, it's, <laughs> it's never my turn. No, it's not. I make a motion. I've spent, I've spent like thousands of dollars today with all of <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, them. <laughs> uh, I make a motion to hire. John Stafford as the Callis Road foreman. Contingent, contingent on the union agreement. Great job, Johnny. I was second. <laughs> okay, and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yay. Thank, Thank you. you. Now if we could just get an assistant treasurer, we'd yeah. be all yeah. staffed up. They're fully staffed. Okay, that brings us to the budget. Pull out your budget. Okay, so let me can I just say a few. Please. Framing 
So one thing um, that pointed out, um, there's, there's quite a few notes in the budget that have not been updated, um, really, in some cases, since the beginning. And that's just a function of the fact that Sandra and I have both been working on this, and neither of, of us taking full ownership, I would say. Um, so rest assured, most, I think almost all of those items have been resolved, no matter what the notes say. Um, and the things that haven't been resolved, well, you just resolved one, was, which was the, um, no, you didn't. Um, the ha what has not been resolved is the software licenses, and that just took a little bit of extra work, Tegan and Jordan and I, and we believe that what we really need to fully fund the Microsoft licenses, Adobe and Zoom, is 2402, which would be an increase Oh, so no, I'm sorry. Let's just, find, let's just find that here. That's um, under general office the, on number, the second the, page, software licenses. What was, the, what was the number that we came up with? Currently, I, came up with it. I don't remember. Yeah. I, I tossed numbers at you and put them together. I have it right here. So currently it's 1600. 2702, sorry. So we're going from 1600 to 2702? So that's an increase of $1,102. And I'll say that that's because Arbitech pointed out that we need backups for all these accounts as far as like access to this information if somebody leaves and tries to take their account or delete everything before they get their account taken away. Everything is available for legal purposes. They thought that this was an important thing for us to do. Hmm. Okay. And we asked if we could do a piecemeal just for some accounts, and they said no. Oh, really? So there's that item. Uh, we still don't have a uh, firm number from the county. Um, we, uh, we we estimated a five percent increase uh, based on conservatively um, in the past. It's been more like three percent. We saw we saw the proposal. We're going to settle their proposed budget later this month but it doesn't show our portion of it. And I've asked, um, um, but we haven't gotten a response about what our portion is, so we're So we're just gonna go- We have an estimate in the budget for We that. have 21,000, we're just gonna go with that. I think that's yeah. as, as reasonable as anything. I Maybe we can use a the ARPA. Increase. We can use the ARPA funds if it goes up. Well, and the, the total they gave was not that different from the total last year in the same, the identical email last year had a very similar dollar amount, so I don't, it doesn't look like that. Oh, well, I'm concerned though. The county courthouse got flooded. They've had to rent other spaces. They may decide that they need to increase it quite a bit. They may. I'm just saying based on the numbers that I saw from the two different emails, it was the same. Yeah. And then the okay. third item would be the ambulance, uh, the East Montpelier Fire Department ambulance. Yeah, okay. which I'm not counting on now that I've actually read the interlocal yeah. agreement. So, so I would say we can, you, you can approve whatever you approve tonight if somehow there's a savings there that's easy enough to plug in because it's a special, it's a, a separate um, warning. So what we would approve tonight is the draft as you've given it to us with the change for the IT and the, and, the and, highway equipment fund. and the highway equipment fund, and we we could amend that next time if there's all, if we do something with the East Montpelier Fire Department, we don't have to leave that open. We can Correct. just amend it. Okay. Everybody understand where we are? Questions, thoughts, discussion. I have a couple little questions. Um, the job description that we approved approved earlier in this meeting was for an assistant treasurer. And in this budget, we've eliminated assistant treasurer and added bookkeeper. Do we yeah, want to align we, those? Do we it, care? It's an assistant yeah. treasurer. It's okay. the same thing. That, that was actually a recommendation from Jill at the league saying, you should come up with a title that's a little, has a more status in this job market, even if it's not a different job. So but it's the, it's the same function, it's the same dollar amount. So I'm just saying we should, in the final published yes. budget draft, yes. align those. Yes, okay. yeah, we'll clean up the notes. <laughs> well, she's suggesting where it says bookkeeper under town administrator. Yeah, okay. Yeah, You'll we'll, we'll get that clean. Okay. Okay. The other thing that popped out at me 
it's related to the next agenda item of the delinquent tax penalty rate. I see that we reduced the delinquent tax collector wages here by a thousand. And I planning on speaking to this more on the next agenda item, but I don't like the steep jump proposed to the tax penalty. And so I would prefer to have a little bit more in here. Uh, I, I think steep penalties on delinquent taxes is All right, let, let's have that discussion now. Um, Car, you want to explain? Yeah, so um, to kind of laid it out in the memo, the, uh, the town has the ability of it's voted on at town meeting to set the delinquent tax penalty up to 8% by statute. And we currently are at 3% and have been there since 2020, although the, I guess there's quite a history with this. This number has fluctuated um, a fair amount. I think it was even at 8% at one time, but... Um, yeah, you probably know much of this history. Mm -hmm. um, so, so whatever we propose is likely to be a discussion, right, in, in, in March. Mm -hmm. um, the staff is recommending to increase it to eight, and there are three main reasons. One is that we're not covering our costs, and I, I have the data in here, but um, we're generating about six thousand dollars, and we budgeted this year eleven thousand. That's what we're paying Sandra to. to just, just the straight wage is, is not, not including, you know, benefits and, and overhead. Um, we're, we're losing money um, to leave for tax collection, if you want to think about it that way. Even so at the 10000 we'll lose money. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so, so there's that. Um, there's also a sense, and, that, you know, I, have, I haven't actually experienced this, but there is a sense that there are people in town that, that can afford to pay the bill but they're just for whatever reason not motivated enough and perhaps a steeper penalty would, would be more of a motivator. And one of the um, points about that is that you can, you can basically um, pay, it'd be easier to pay the delinquent tax penalty than to pay um, credit card financing, right? So if you were to choose one or the other, you would. We have the best interest rate. In other words, right, they're sort of borrowing money from us at a very cheap rate. And to that point, at one point in the history, the delinquent tax rate was 1% more than our borrowing rate to ensure that whatever we would have to borrow against them, they would have to pay us a little bit more. But that's a little more complicated than anyone wants to engage in. And then um, the third point is we're relatively low. We didn't do a comprehensive analysis, but Worcester, Marshall, Plainfield, Cavity, East Montpelier are all at 8%. Barry C's at 3%, and they have a sort of progressive uh, policy that goes up um, each month thereafter. Um, or I guess it goes to 8% after 30 days. Um, Sandra warned us about doing anything complex like that. It's just yeah. going to add. Oh, to really? I like that idea. Why? What, what well, was it? Just why? because it requires more calculations and more, and people are, if somebody pays their tax bill, Right after the percentage goes up, it's just huh. the more complication we have, the more work it's going to take for that delinquent tax. Yeah, that would, Woodbury had a version of that too. They started half a percent the first month and increased by half a percent each month thereafter up to six. Did, do I remember Sandra presenting the tax collector role properly when she said that there's a certain amount of kind of discretion around setting up like payment plans and the, <coughs> and the application of a uh, of an interest rate for for late payment? So most of that goes to the Board of Abatement. The treasurer can't wiggle around with these fees and things. The only thing that can happen is someone can apply to the Board of Abatement and the Board of Abatement can decide whether the fees were inappropriate or should be taken off. But she's, I, yeah, you'd have to talk to her about payment plans and things. I don't know her procedure there. How many people are we talking about on a typical year? Just three or four people question. or dozens no, 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 no. of people? Oh, yeah. It's a two-pager okay. sometimes most of the year. And Sandra's very clear that oh, most of the people who struggle to pay come and talk to us and set up a plan really mm -hmm. early on. And the people who are not struggling to pay just sit there until they decide it's time to write a signature. Interesting. Yeah. 
So I mean, if there is a way to, because I wouldn't want it to be regressive, and I, I feel like Sandra has something to work with folks that know it's going to be problematic because it is challenging, right. you know, if just all of a sudden you have to come up with, especially since it keeps climbing and climbing. Like, sure, I'll readily find that money. That's what I make a month. If I have that right now, I just won't pay anything else. Yeah, right. Um, I just versus that. the people that are just slacking. Because I, I know too, there's a lot of people that just wait until they they have to, and that sucks because they there's no reason they couldn't be paying on time. Uh, currently, the liquid taxes for this past fall is a four-page document that's a list of names. So it's some of them though are like one cent. Or ten cents. All the ones that people paid theirs, thank you. Oh my god. They did? Did they really? I said like that wasn't even late and I was Yeah, it's, it's fifteen to twenty people per page on here. And some of them are smaller, some of them are just interest fees, and some of them are straight up taxes. Um, I could do a more yeah. detailed analysis if you need. I know one piece of the discussion was that this is likely to be debated on the floor and oh, could absolutely. be negotiated down yeah, as a compromise. So I mean, I think it's important that we cover our costs for for tax collection. Um, and so if there needs to be a conversation uh, at town meeting, which there like, likely will be, then great. Then we have room for having the conversation about what we want the rate to be. But, you know, maybe with the increase in property values and what the increase in what the outstanding Taxes for delinquent <coughs> will be, you know, moving into the new new fiscal years. We're looking at something more like a six percent. But with Sandra's recommendation that it, that we should at least propose the eight percent to cover costs. I think that's a great place to start the conversation. And if we want to roll it back from there, then we at, at then town meeting. At town meeting, then that's what we do. Yeah. That would be my piece. Okay. Um, since we've just had this discussion, shall we go ahead and vote on that item even though it's not up yet? Which is um, increasing the delinquent tax rate and putting it on the warning as such. Do you want to vote that one specifically or do you want to incorporate that into the... the oh, you're right. That's how we were going to do them all, yeah. weren't we? Okay, never mind. I think... Does anybody want to continue this discussion? I think... No, I'm hearing that's fine, and then they okay. it on the floor is reasonable. Okay, let's go back to the budget then. Anything else on the budget? Does that change how you feel about the budget for delinquent tax collection? It was for the salary that you were... Well, because you were talking right. like making the salary better and reducing the penalty. Right. No, I think... That's fine. Yeah. If it was all people that were just unable to pay their taxes or were struggling, that would totally be like, yeah. Yeah, and it would be interesting to have some uh, better, to be able to speak to that more clearly, I think, on the floor. Because I, I do remember that there, Sandra's saying that, like, most of the folks who, who need to set up a payment plan have the opportunity to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, what might that look like? The, this, the, of the 200000 in delinquent taxes, X percent come from the upper quartile of property <laughs> okay. valuation, you know what I mean? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. There's going to be you very little be, sympathy for that group. Could be broken down <laughs> yeah. by, you know, 100,000 in property value or something. Be an interesting way to present it. Because mm -hmm. it definitely okay. sways looks like, my feelings. Looks feeling. like Kari's on it. Okay. Let's see what we come up with. It was the credit card argument that swayed me when I was having this discussion. Um, any other items here you want to talk about? Are we ready to move the budget? This is a big step. We've been working on this since September. Well, we've been squeezing and squeezing. So I think, yes. Okay. So the motion would be to move the budget as presented with the three changes. Three changes, was it? I, I wanted to share a little bit of context. This is really anecdotal, but I was on a, a VLCT legislative call today, and 
when town representatives spoke up, they were talking about how bad their budgets were. And two of them said they had 20% increases. Oh my year. gosh. And Cabot said 10. So I actually felt better about our situation. Especially after tonight. Yeah, and we're buying all this equipment. We're doing great. <laughs> Okay. I think we've all. I, I think that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Would somebody like to move this? Oh, I'll move to accept the budget as refined and presented tonight, with the amendments that we've discussed. Rose, do you need more than that? I don't think so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's three of them, right? It's the uh, there's the highway equipment fund, highway equipment, the addition of the uh, the application of thirty five thousand dollars to the highway equipment fund, software licensing increase, increase of software licensing to twenty seven hundred oh two. and the changing of the name of the bookkeeper to the assistant the bookkeeper. Uh, treasurer. Um, that's all I got. Okay, three changes. Do we have a second for Jordan's motion? I second. Donnie, Donnie. All right. <laughs> Spend that money. Well, that one will get that. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Whoa. Carrie, do you have a sense of work. what that gives us as good work. Feel pretty good net increase? Or you need it's going to be right around three. seven. I can, I can push it right <laughs> yeah. now. That's, what? Pretty, that's great. Yeah. You didn't yeah. get yeah. much better than that. No, it's, we did barely over half of where we started. I hope the town feels the same way. Well, we negotiated, we negotiated a contract that gives benefits and higher wages to the road crew and the rest of the staff. There's, there's significant payment. Well, this is a disaster. We are moving into the next item, which is budget communications, discussion of how to communicate the budget decision to the voters. Um, I'd be willing to write something up with Kari's help for Front Porch Forum explaining this. Yeah, I think I what you wrote in the, in the select board report is, a, is really the, the foundation yeah. of it, is that we're investing in people and equipment mm -hmm. to get the work done and then I think this the, the the larger context right this is is not what we're experiencing is not at all unique this is happening in other towns it has to do with the labor market it has to do with inflation in general um, yeah and then and then so I think that like the me I think we can work on the messages and then how do we want to communicate mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to uh, grab that. I just usually tend to do those things. Is there somebody else who would like to work on that? Because I'm happy to. Yeah, defer. but I think, <laughs> like what Kari said, what you've already articulated, yeah. because that in the, in we're, the we're investing in our, our staff and our, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to focus on the most important things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we work on that? And, and we should probably post a couple of times in front porch forward. Perhaps. Anywhere else? I think we should probably have at least one hearing in which we invite people to come and discuss the budget mm -hmm. yeah. with us. Um, and, and It's been warned on like, know, the that, last six months. You know, the nobody meetings, nobody but, ever pays any attention until they yeah, suddenly you see have to, they, yeah. they <laughs> say, yeah, you until, yeah. yeah, until town meeting, and then we'll sit there and argue about it at town meeting. <laughs> well, um, we might, when we do public notices of the town meeting warning at the stores and whatnot, we might leave a copy of the memo oh. about yeah, the, with the warning good. just so people can... Good idea, yeah. 7.01%. Um, 7. 7. Do we have to have
have an informational hearing on all the items on the, that we're going to vote on Australian ballot anyway at some point, don't we? Say that again. Oh, where was I reading this? There was the we have bond, we do. for the bond. Okay, but not for all Australian ballot items. We right. don't have that many Australian ballot items. There's the well, the, the zoning regs, which we just did, right? Yeah. Right. And then the, the select board. Well, and, and there are a few other things. The the Woodbury Fire Department budget, for example. That's the floor vote. Oh, you're right. That is a floor vote. Yeah, most okay. of the floor votes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to do that anyway, and it's supposed to be no. no the greater, more greater bond has to be within ten days. Within of the ten days. So February twenty sixth would be a good day to do that, and we could we could tack on the budget for a good. Form. That's what I was it's saying. A good practice. Yeah. February 26th. What day of the week is that? That's your, that's your meeting. Oh, it is? It's February meeting. Oh, okay. Did you just make that up? No. <laughs> <laughs> you back in the yeah, next week? <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll add public hearing on the budget and Australian ballot issues at that time. Okay. All right. Moving right along. We spoke to the fire department. We just uh, read the warning. Yes. So now we're to the warning itself. And you have all these things here. Is that right, Kari? All the, you have the budget in here. You just have to plug yeah, the numbers. Yeah, we just have to plug the numbers into the budget one. Um, yeah, Tegan, do you want to speak to this one at all, or? Which one am I speaking to? The, the warning, the draft warning. Um, this is the I can. Are there questions about the draft warning? Most of it's stuff we already talked about. It's all yeah. just consolidated in one spot. Okay. What we're looking for tonight is, is it doesn't have, I don't think it needs to be formal approval, but basically directions so that we can send this off to the attorney, have them look over, make sure the language is proper, and then you would see this again in two weeks and finalize it so we can. And at that time in two yeah. weeks, Gus wants to come and talk to us about the process we're going to go through at town meeting. Yeah. Um, what we're going to have to do is figure out who, it, the, the normal way is one of us moves each item. And whoever moves that item speaks to the item. So we're going to, you should be looking at this over the next two weeks and thinking about which items you'd like to move and speak to. And we should all at least take one and maybe, you know, more, I don't know how many, no, there's 20 odd items, so yeah. Okay. We did this morning add in a line into the header about um, being able to observe the meeting by Zoom. And we can put the link in there so, so you're aware of that. I think it's fine if, if, but they can't participate. All they can do is watch. And they can't vote. Yeah, they can't vote. They won't be able to vote. They can't right. observe. Right. And Sarah, the webmaster, has already agreed to run the Zoom. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Am I allowed to ask you a question? Of course. This? Okay, thanks. I was just looking at the Digger article from a year ago that was talking about, you know, in preparation of town meeting, the state of callous. And um, I feel like there's so much to celebrate at town meeting based on you here in the room and all the hard work that everybody has done this year of repair and like moving forward and I know um, there's a lot to that but I would love to just as a um, resident recommend that there be set aside some time where the select board you Kari I don't know who it is somebody else be able to publicly talk about all of the achievements of the community from the past year um, so that people who are not paying close attention and don't understand all the work that you've done have some sense of um, morale in terms of where we are. The budget issues are going to be real, but the accomplishments of one year and all of this work, I just hope that that won't go 
unnoticed, if that makes sense. So I just want to recommend that the select board consider just publicly making sure that there's all that sharing is being done, if, if there's um, a way to do, do that. Do you think people will read the select board report? You know, there's always the reports from each one, because that's what we've done. In the yeah, I just report. think it's different from community, having someone, and like, like I was saying, like the right person, and I don't know who that is, mm -hmm. who has the respect of the community and also is a good communicator, be able to really just think about like how far this town has come in one year and just be able to, at some point, like just set that tone. Because I do think that that um, is, that it's just really remarkable how much has happened this year in the town of Calus government. So, um, but yeah, I think people will read that, but also some people are just not readers, you know, it's not there. Um, so yeah. That's my two cents. Okay. Thank you. I can talk to Gus about that. Right. I was thinking it might be something Gus would do as part of an introduction. He might. He might. I'll have a conversation with him about it. I saw him at the State of the State Address um, last week, and we talked a little bit about this, too. Oh, you did? So, yeah. 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 It's the sort of thing he'd be excellent at. Yeah. But one thing I always worry about, though, when you try to thank everybody, is you'll forget. <laughs> well, I don't mean um, thanking everyone, and, and it just mean someone who can paint a picture and give a sense yeah. of right. things. Yeah. 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 A note to, to yeah. discuss that thank with you. us. And the wheels did not come off. <clears throat> well, not only did the wheels not really come off, there is pretty significant existential flood that happened in the middle of it and still the wheels got stuck. <laughs> Didn't come on. It's not fun if they don't just uh, Yeah. I think that's great. Um, I, mean, would, I think it'd be great if Preston would say something like that, you know. Or at least like written, make it, like I think the town report does a pretty good job like art articulating some of the things that you thought were pretty serious to take advantage or you know, take the opportunity to address this year, but well, Gus is going to come to our next meeting, yeah. so we can talk to him Great. together, and I'll talk to him beforehand. Okay. Um, Karen, what do you need in terms of this warning? You said you need us to formally. I don't approve think you need to formally approve. We need if if you have anything different in mind from these words. No, I think it's. We want to know it now. Um, and then yeah. we'll bring it back for formal approval. Right, that's right. You're yeah. going to run it by the uh, attorney. I forgot. Okay. <coughs> yep. All right, good. Wow, did we we actually go through this? <laughs> and it's only 8.30. 7.30. 7.30. That's only 7.30. Well, we started at 5, so we still been <laughs> a long time. So we're already down to 8.20 reports. Tegan, you got anything you want to say to us? Um, just a few things. I just got an email that our female person is in Chicago, so the meeting is not happening tomorrow. She said she'll postpone. Um, Fun thing, Erica Heilman talked to most of you, I think, uh, for her town report report. She says that Tobin is almost done writing it. He's just putting college touches, and she's pitching it to Vermont Public also as a radio story. Oh, so she will be contacting you all again to make sure you're okay with being on the radio. Um, I thought that was a cool thing. She sounded very excited when I talked to her on the phone today. Uh, the plow has been named the Callus Smurf Cat. Nice. The summers are blue, like winter is blue, and they are hardworking just like our group. So the explanation yes, I was given. Fantastic. Scoop Dog did not make the cut to the surprise of all the adults because the children don't know who Snoop Dog is. Um, I thought it had to be a cat. Soon enough. It doesn't have to be a cat. A cat said it would be a cougar. So that is going to be him painted or stenciled or something on the truck. John Stafford said he knew what was going to do it. And then once that's done, they're going to take all the trucks on some beautiful day in the next month or two to the school for the kids to see the trucks. Mm -hmm. It's a little more interactive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really good. And our job application. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fourth graders are exactly <laughs> um, Other than that, we close the dog year. We are going to Sending out renewal renewal notices in the next couple weeks for the next. You closed the dog year. You the dog. <laughs> the license. Year of the dog. The, year, the dog licenses have to be closed every year and reopened. It's a it's a process. Um, 
And so Barbara and I are going to start working on sending out renewal notices. Uh, I did learn that there's an online module for dogs. Right now we use the desktop module. We're not going to switch now because now is a bad time and Nimrick doesn't have time to do it with us, but probably the next year or so. It doesn't cost any more money. There's no, it's not a big change. It won't be anything dramatic, um, but it'll probably be an online module next year. Um, other than that, just trying to figure out ballots and things. Uh, Melissa Tuck, got this sign up sheet. Melissa Teller is running for clerk of the school district. She runs the elections for the school district um, and she needs signatures on her petition like we all do when we're running for office. So that's over in the town office. If you're ever over there, just give her a little signature. She needs folks from all the towns to sign her petition uh, mm -hmm. so she can run. And we are. And you're running again, are you? I don't need to run again for two more years. Oh, it's you're three return. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're, we've got, we're taking absentee ballot requests and getting set up in the election management system. Uh, the checklist is going to go out to the printers this week for school ballots and local ballots. Um, so that's, we're getting that all set up. Um, and I'm learning how all this stuff works. Yeah. It's good you've got Barbara. There's Barbara. I hope she's feeling better soon. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Curry, you have a report. Yeah, um, we covered a lot of what I've been working on tonight. Uh, so I do want to give uh, kudos to the road crew. It's been an interesting um, last three weeks. We are in a lot of mud. Um, we are going to see um, quite a bill on gravel. You know, which we talked about earlier, and just being fortunate the gravel has been available to us. Um, but um, the, you know, they so they basically doing we're doing month season operations for a couple weeks there, and it, we're able to address most of the roads. But Pekin Brook is rough. Jack Hill's got some rough spots. Uh, Kent Hill Road. We'd like to get back out there, but we need proper conditions to do it. Um, and that's a question. Can you yeah. can you grade when the road is frozen? You can't. So when do you grade when it's mud season and then it freezes? When it's firm though, because they were out. Yeah, yeah. And then it starts yeah. snowing. You can, you can, <laughs> there's not a ton of frost, so you, you can. But the more you travel it, the worse it's going to get. Yeah, it's, and that was part of the challenge of yesterday and today was that they were grading. They were grading. They were plowing on. Fresh gravel basically it hasn't been compacted at all. Jeez, so, you, I think that they can like lightly touch up, but mostly what what they're what they've been doing is bringing fresh gravel to the worst spots and then you know smoothing that out, and then you know only gets a certain amount of traffic over it. And, um, yeah, it's been it's been rough, and I hope this is not the new normal because this, this is this is no fun. It immediately reminded me, like uh, when I went to Ireland, and I noticed that every road is paved there, even though it's not a wealthy place. But um, they just don't have dirt roads. Well, I, I wonder <clears throat> now because I talk about equipment so much, I get ads for all kinds of things. Uh, <clears throat> but there are areas in more temperate uh, climates that um, that use just different equipment. Uh, for maintaining their dirt roads. And there's, there are milling machines, which in North America are more commonly used for like foresting tracks and, uh, and mulching, like mulching. I mean, it's a very heavy duty. I mean, they're similar to the types of things that you use for asphalt stripping, except they're used for, uh, for processing gravel roads. Uh, they're fairly common in more rural areas in huh. Europe. And, my guess is they're fairly expensive. There are only a handful of uh, manufacturers that make them, but they they generally get strapped onto the back of like a 160 horse tractor. And so, you know, as we start weighing the conversation about graders, um, how effective are, are graders for the type of road maintenance that we might need, or do do we supplement them so we have a grader and we have something else? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you've looked into the types of milling rigs done, but I, I haven't gotten too deep into that. No, but there, there there's an outfit out of Canada um, that that manufactures or at least resells them. Um, they use them a lot for maintaining like logging roads, uh -huh. uh, and that's 
sort of thing. And what's nice about it is it's a milling, it's a milling machine. So it's the road's frozen, if it's dirt, if it's whatever, um, you can you can mill through it. If there's ledge underneath it or hard by teeth on it, it mills through it. Wow. And so it's processing the road base plus mixing it. And I think some places also like work on putting in like a some sort of line so that you get like a Portland based something so it, it firms up the road as well. So does, does that mean you need less gravel because it to, it's able to sort of recycle what's already there? In theory. I mean it really depends a lot on what the sub base is and like everything else but um, it, it, it's but potentially yeah I mean it, huh. they could take a portion of it. They could take a portion of it. I think the bigger thing is like if you run into a section of road where you're where you have ledge or something like that, where you can't get good compaction and you put material on it, but the material moves downhill or uphill or sideways, mm -hmm. right. um, you can you can actually get mm -hmm. a depth of compactable road surface that's, that's a lot easier to maintain. What was most appealing to me was that you can start mixing stuff in there. So you're not talking mm -hmm. about spraying, you're not talking about, you know, as, as the roads start to get compacted, like the fines move up to the top, the other stuff gets dragged down to the bottom, and now you have a dust issue, et cetera, et cetera, and it just kind of keeps going. But if you can process the material. Hmm. Yeah. I think so, it's just the material that we use these days, too. Yeah, it's a huge I, I mean, I, for my own business, I, I prefer to use the ledge. Nothing packs like it, there's no, there's no type of compaction, but you have the, the flip side of that, you have the problems of flat tires and stuff like that. You mean that's the kind of gravel you like? What mm -hmm. you're calling a ledge gravel? They, they call it, it it's Is a plant slate? mix. It's a, oh. it, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a slate. Mm -hmm. The granite doesn't pack as well. It packs better over time versus short term. Mm -hmm. It'll pack really hard in two or three years, you're not going to shovel it up. But for two months, six months, eight months, a year, it's, it's not going to firm up. And you're going to blow out a lot of tires. That's definitely a downside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, and it just degrades <laughs> over time differently. Yeah, it's just the nature of the material. Well, I think the whole construction industry is going to go through a phase here soon where manufactured materials are going to be a lot harder to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're running out of places. Oh, okay. So there is a financial report in the packet now. Didn't get in there until today. <laughs> so apologies for that. Um, Sandra did do her um, verbal su or text summary, so you can see um, essentially we're you know we're halfway through the fiscal year and we have spent seventy two percent of our budget. That's what she came up with. But that's that's okay. That because it includes most of our one time larger expenses. You know. The, like the social service appropriation. Not to mention things. FEMA expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then there's the cash situation, which we talked about earlier. We're gonna need to hopefully access that, that loan um, in February or March. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, Sandra is, um, will stop being our treasurer in March, and so one of my top priorities is getting up to speed on that function. I mean, I know, I know a fair amount, but I don't know enough about the mechanics of the Nimric software, you know, the accounting system, and, you know, whether or not we are able to hire an assistant treasurer on that time period, I want to be proficient at least the basics. Uh, and then um, we do have Wendy Wilton, who uh, works for Nimric, who served as the treasurer. Is, is it, she's already performing payroll and some other financial functions for us. She's willing to, to, to continue and do even, even somewhat more, but I want to make sure that make the best use of her if that's the route to go. She's expensive though, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'd be nice. But, but efficient is the other thing, I mean, and, and if we're not, yeah, so anyway. Yeah. And we just switched to the bi-weekly payroll, so she's only getting payroll every other week now, which will cut down on hours. That yeah. Mm -hmm. So that um, report is in our folders now? It is. We can get There's a subfolder called that. Financial Report. Okay, great. Thank you. July through December. Oh, it's for the half half year point. Yeah. It's not the monthly. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Okay. Uh, Jamie, you got anything to report? Not as much as I was hoping to. I have been having near daily conversations with historic preservation permitting people, with the contract.
contractor with the uh, with the NK, the engineers. Um, there's still little hiccups and holdups with the design. Some of the math didn't work exactly how they thought with the new design they'd come up with. Um, it was perfectly adequate for um, summer conditions, but had a weak spot with potential ice shifting. Um, and so they're, they're back changing things a little bit again. Um, I, we're down to the wire. Um, I have a couple of meetings scheduled for this week with potential larger donors. Um, and we'll hopefully be, learn more and be more confident uh, after those happen. Um, but it's, it's slow and nerve wracking, but we're plowing forward. But Larry Hebert's still with us? Larry Hebert? Wasn't he sort of saying, hey, there's a deadline here? As of now, he's still with us. He hasn't given us a firm date you have to decide by. Um, okay. he, He's still working with us. And he and Michael at DNK are in contact several times a week uh, finalizing these details. So he knows we can't do anything until that's done anyway. Um, so it, it's all just moving a lot slower than any of us would like, but people still seem optimistic that it's all going to come together. By the way, I was cleaning out a closet after Christmas, and I found these old Curtis Pond Dam documents dating back to 2003. Hmm. That's how long we've been working, and that yeah. that wasn't even the beginning. Right. Yeah, there's a box in the vault if anyone ever wants to dig into it. Of with the, the, this kind Curtis of Curtis Pond Dam yeah. And stuff. Yeah. 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 We have a ton of stuff too. It's been, yeah, it's been a 20 plus year odyssey. Odyssey and <laughs> coming down to the wire, I think. Um, yeah. Katie, yeah. if anything could happen to help you, what would it be? If you had money. <laughs> <laughs> How much money? Uh, about $300,000 is our current thing. funding gap. And yeah, have, I don't know if you know, when, when, when you opened the bids, they were almost 500000 over what our budget was. And so we whittled that down, but um, yeah, it's it's the funding gap. the The permitting stuff will come together. The design will come together. the The time sensitive, scary aspect is at some point in the near future, we have to either sign a contract with the contractor saying he's going to build it this summer, or he'll fill his schedule with other jobs. And that's, that'll be the moment of truth on, you know. And if we don't do it this year, month. who knows what it costs yeah, right. the following year. Right. So, so one of the conversations that's happening is um, there have been other dam projects in Vermont over the last 10 years that had permitting or funding or other similar delays where a contractor has agreed to honor a price the following year. Um, in the current climate, I don't think that's likely. Um, no right. Not concrete. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, machine time labor, short. Sure. Right. Material, solid. Not gonna happen. Yeah. So, you know, the fear always is it gets delayed a year because you're $300,000 short, you spend that year, you raise $300,000 and the price tag goes up $400,000 <laughs> and you're in the same position every year. Um, and, you know, it is critical. Dam safety is saying it's not adequate. Um, and we're still, when we had that flooding event, what was that, two weeks ago? December. You know, it was cold, it was wet, it was raining. We were out there at night putting tarps over the dam and monitoring it and watching the water levels rise. Like it's, and on the phone with dam safety and the engineers and it's, uh, it's fragile and 
it, it's a thing. It's just got to get done. Have, has anybody come up with the long-term costs of what it's going to cost in insurance and maintenance and all that over the next hundred years, you know, however long, you know, because that's something else that's going to go into it too. Like, yeah, initially here's your million dollar bill and then how much is it after that? Because that's a lot of money. Sandra spoke at one point about the insurance costs. I don't remember, but I, I think um, it's it's not expected to be because I, I do know very high cost. A, a little bit with the the memorial hall part, right? The the swimming access there. There were talks that there was issues with the insurance because if somebody drowns, right, the town gets sued. Right. I mean, that's kind of a, are we going to have lifeguards, are we going to have people out there watching, I mean, what, what's the plan once the dam is done? We haven't heard anything past that point other than the dam. I know, I don't remember the details, but I know in the original conversations with the previous select board, um, there was a lot of discussion and research before the decision was made to transfer it to the town, the hope was that the Curtis Pond Association um, could just sort of do it on their own. Um, and do, the, do, do it, you mean insure it? Yeah, own it. Mm -hmm. um, and the insurance for a private entity or a nonprofit or LLC or something um, was a, probably unavailable, and if it was available, it was astronomically expensive. During construction, we can't get insurance. Right. That was what we found. So, we put, after it's built, passive, the um, VLCT insurance that we all belong to, hmm. um, they will insure it. And, and yeah, because... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. remember the cost. I don't know what is the... I'll find out. Right, yeah. yeah. The fire trucks and stuff, too. I just... I, Right. Just curious because there's a lot of things that I think because the town the already owns two properties on the pond, the pond access aspect of it doesn't change much of anything. Yeah, we already paid for we, coverage for the uh, swim area and what's and the, the island. island. Yeah. So we'd add this to it. Yeah, I don't remember. We had that meeting where they presented all the insurance and We, we also had a discussion about repairs once. It, was, it wasn't mm -hmm. much, as I recall. Yeah, it was expected to be minimal. <laughs> there was a... There was a <laughs> it's just a basic design. I it's right. a block of cement. There was an alternative design that we considered early on that was estimated to cost half as much to build up front but would have substantial annual maintenance expenses. Um, and so a decision was made pretty early on that it was better to have the upfront cost, get the stronger, better dam, and not have those ongoing maintenance expenses. Um, this town and village center money that's coming down from Senator Leahy now, that hasn't been appropriated. Um, this this amount of people, our, our whole town, we would fall under the, the cap that is twenty five hundred, right or less. And I'm just wondering because Ben Dole was quoted saying that they have they're swimming in money from this was already appropriated, and it's going to be a competitive process now to take that money. Has anybody been in touch with? Ben Doyle with some kind of angle about like what would we need to do in Maple Corner to get related money because they're trying to bring in economic development to town and village centers with this as a new um, program there at Preservation Trust. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if with some creativity and relationships there's a way to ask Mark Mihaly and others to say could we bring Ben out because right now they're talking about adamant and I don't know that Investing more money in adamant would be as important in terms of viability downstream right now as fixing the dam. Has that been considered at all? Well, how many times has adamant washed out now? Mm -hmm. Well, 
Well, I just five, mean six. I just mean that there's not a lot of money running around, but that is a pot of money right now that hasn't been allocated, and it our population falls. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm, I'm not positive if we we've looked at a lot of different yeah. pools that are out right now. Yeah. I'm not positive off the top of my head, but I'll yeah. email our grants to you. We've certainly been in touch with the delegation. Yeah. It's a brand About, new thing yeah. that's happening. Well, in, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I'll look into that. Okay. Um, we do have this grant application that's in that we think is very strong. Um, it's Five hundred thousand dollars. We'll find out in March if we get all or some of it. Um, it is all reimbursable, so we wouldn't get it until the project was done. Um, but it potentially could um, reimburse a lot. You know, half the project. At this point, are, are, are any portions of the project broken out into segments? So if we needed to contract the the construction of it imminently how we would be able to pay for the majority of the construction costs without putting the balance of the project there are a few pieces of it that could theoretically be Postponed a couple years down the road, but not three hundred thousand. But not three hundred thousand dollars. <throat> okay, thanks, Jamie. Uh, Jordan, anything new in IT? No. Mm, no, not really. Other than the conversation about licensing that's already built into the budget, I think um, I just took a fresh pass through like what's included in those licenses, and I think they've added some things to the basic levels. So I think there's a chance that we could probably even like put it. The opportunity arises to re up those licenses, we could probably reduce, walk those back with producing We tried to take a look at some today and we had a little bit of progress, but yeah. not a lot. So, next yeah, even at the select board member, well, at the select board member level, like mm -hmm. at this point, the SharePoint teams, so like that could be walked back to, those could be walked back to basics um, mm -hmm. as opposed to their standards. Um, if everybody's comfortable with it, you know. It depends, but okay. So you'll keep working on that. Yeah, I guess. So. Uh, yeah, and I guess the other thing that we talked about just uh, somewhat new is for thinking. So a bigger, a big component of it was going to be the file sharing and getting organized around uh, that and migrating, uh, finishing the transition uh, away from kind of the split between the Google Docs um, file that we're using for a lot of the select board stuff um, to one that's baked into the Microsoft suite that we're paying for. Um, and we're thinking I'll kind of keep working on organizing that uh, so that it can be a resource that's in place for after March uh, when we have mm -hmm. the installation of a new select board. Um, and then we'll just run run with it, you know, with that at that point we'll do do an intro. But. Okay. Uh, Ann or Jordan. Tell us about horses. I don't think you have a lot to tell you about horses okay. right now. <laughs> no, but if we have the time and we're planning on going uh until two three. Uh it'd be good to take advantage of the executive section and I think that we've got one about this we have a conversation about it. Oh, okay. Uh, have you had a conversation that, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be good just to check okay. in on where we're at. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, I don't have anything else here at the end of the agenda. So why don't we, we won't adjourn because we're going to some the session, but I guess we'll just tell everybody else. Uh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, let's let's do the motion to go into executive session. Shall we invite Kari to join us? Uh, yeah. What? Why don't you make that motion under one BSA section three thirteen a one e? So moved, and I'd like to add that uh, we invite Kari into the uh, into the session. Yes, you got that. And then when you do up the minutes, bring us out in what do you think? 15, 20 minutes. Twenty minutes, I think. Bring us out in twenty minutes and nothing to report. Eight o'clock. Yeah, and then have us adjourn.
Does anyone know if there's a trick to getting the fire door upstairs to close? No idea. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be closed. It's supposed to be closed all the time, forever and ever, and it was open before the meeting, so I emailed Barbara to ask if there was some special reason it's open. Well, Andy Felice would be the one who would know, I would think. I mean, Andy's in here, Donna's in here, John's in here, Barbara's in There's a lot of folks in and out, but mm -hmm. I, I'm going to close it. I don't think there's anything oh. in there. Okay, so thank you. I think we're, we're now going into executive session.